Are you ever getting lost in the open waters or just confused on when to use skills like haste or manifest while playing dredge? Maybe you just want to figure out how to make the most money. Who are those strange hooded characters? Or maybe you're just frustrated trying to locate fish you swear are in this area because the encyclopedia claims it's right under you. It's easy to feel like you're up to your neck, not only in water, but also strategy and planning when sailing in dredge. Luckily for you, I've gone ahead and drowned, so you don't have to. My name is Ban Shredded Cheese, and I'm a streamer over on Twitch and a YouTuber who's not afraid to dive headfirst into unknown waters and flounder around till I can figure out what's going on. These tips I'm about to tell you range from no really up to some pretty clever tricks and hacks you likely wouldn't think of. I've included timestamps down in the description if you want to jump around, or you can stay tuned to learn everything there is to know about dredge, or just to see if I stop with these exquisite fish puns. And with that pun out of the way, let's jump right in. Starting off sweet and simple, the lighthouse and compass are both crucial to being able to navigate through the waters of the world. If you ever need to reorient yourself during or after longer journeys and crossings, the lighthouse is always visible and can be used in a pinch to establish where you are relative to Greater Morrow. Pairing the compass with the the map can also save you a ton of trouble when trying to do local search missions like searching for quest sites marked on maps. If you want to learn how to leave markers on maps, make sure you stay tuned till later in this video. Unlike in real life, you'll be able to wake up before 6am without hitting snooze a million times. As long as your panic me meter is reset, you slept enough, but that's our next tip, so I'll tell you more after this. You can take advantage of those early mornings to undock and chase those night fish while the monsters of the night head back to the depths before sun rises. Getting out on the water sooner means you can travel further and potentially even make it to new destinations with enough time to snag some fish before it gets too late. Stick around until I cover traveling in tip 9 if you want to take even more advantage of those early mornings. The panic meter is nothing to panic about, but being aware of where your sanity sits is crucial to being able to best take advantage of the days and nights you'll be spending out on the water. Seeing hallucinations such as phantom jagged rocks increases as your panic levels increase. It's obviously smart to avoid those rocks, and the easiest way to do so would be not letting your panic rise to the point they can appear in the first place. The higher your panic sits, the more likely you are to end up with infected fish as well that cuts into your profits and income, which makes staying up for those extended periods even less appealing, not to mention just like in real life, no one will be really impressed or give you awards or accolades for pulling 24 hour days out on the water, so just sleep. That includes you who's watching this at 2.30 in the morning, I see you, I'll still be here tomorrow, so let's just go to sleep, we'll call it a night and I'll see you then. When looking for fish, your first thought would be to just meander around and hope for the best after checking the encyclopedia, but that is not the most time efficient way to find what you are looking for. Being able to look out on the horizon to find what you are looking for can save you days in game and keep you from wanting to give up and go tell the villager she'll never get her fermented eel. I'm not speaking from experience, why would you ask? The site class can be used for checking what disturbed waters have from a distance, saving you time. If you need more time in the day, keep in mind time only ticks while your boat is moving and while you are fishing or dredging. Books allow you to discover power-ups that greatly enhance the play experience and are permanent. This means you don't have to be picky about what books you read, you should focus on reading them as soon as you have a new one or finish reading your previous book. Try your best to avoid a backlog of unread books as that is only hurting yourself in the long run. Some books can get you better prices, move and or fish faster, and some books you can get from the final tip are arguably too good, so make sure you stick around for that final tip. Inventory space is limited when out on the waters and you'll likely be finding yourself wishing you had just a bit more room to move stuff between areas. Your storage is perfect for doing so as it follows you around without having to fit in your boat's inventory. If you stick around for tip 9, you'll also learn an easy hack to expand your boat's inventory while sailing around. Materials can be kept in the dry or wet docks, and everything from quest items, treasures, and fish can be kept in storage. Just keep an eye on the fish so they don't begin rotting. Additionally, if you have any treasures or fish you want to make sure you do not lose, they should go to storage right away as the various monsters of the sea, including rocks, can lead to you losing items overboard. I'm speaking from experience when I say trying to go full Tokyo Drift through Gale Cliffs to impress your chat isn't worth it. Just don't take the risk. Put those straight to storage, or even if it's a research part, you can use it right away. Speaking of research parts, make sure you are spending them wisely. The temptation to pour all of them into engines is a trap, and you just might find yourself stuck midway through the game. Some areas you go to need more advanced rods to be able to fish. Had you spent all your points on your need for speed, you might get stuck in an area with no ability to fish up anything. If you, like me, have made this mistake, you can always go hunting for research parts or buy them from the traveling merchant. Just be aware it can take up to 4 days for a new one to become available. Not to mention a price of a few hundred dollars can cause you and your wallet some serious headache trying to get the equipment you could and should have been prioritizing. No matter how good at Tetris you are, or if you already skipped ahead to the next tip, inventory space is still extremely limited. Prioritizing the highest value fish you can fit is important. 
Higher value fish typically swim deeper and in more treacherous waters. This means targeting the shallows and oceanic instead of coastal fish in many cases can help you get additional profits. Trophy fish will also give higher dollar amounts, but targeting these fish can be hard to track down intentionally. Aberrant fish are not only much easier to spot than trophy fish, but are worth more than them too, so these should be grabbed anytime you see a glowing aura coming from disturbed waters. If you are unsure the value of a fish, or if you have the room in your inventory you need, you can always reference the encyclopedia to know what prices and shapes all the fish you have discovered are. Crab pots and trawl nets are some of the easiest ways to collect passive income. They will almost always collect more than the cost to repair, so you definitely need to be using them all the time. Just make sure you keep an eye on them so you can grab them before they break. Trawl nets will fill up with fish as you sail around and have their own inventory so you don't have to worry about them filling up your boat before you can catch the fish you are after. Crab pots are great for passively collecting crabs to use as an income and can be used as place markers on the map. This means if there's a location you want to make sure you come back to, you can mark it by dropping a cheap crab pot down and sacrificing it as a way to always have a spot to fish or a wreck to dredge marked on the map. If you are able to get back to these crab pots in time, you can always pick them back up and repair them for future use. Otherwise, the marker is still going to show on the map. It's just going to be damaged beyond repair by the time you get back to it. Traveling around the map can be very time consuming, especially if you have some slower motors. The faster you travel around the map, the faster you can start fishing in the area while the sun is still up. You unlock the haste ability fairly early and can use that as a turbo to speed your boat up. Just make sure not to let the bar fully fill so you can avoid damaging your engines. The only cost of using this boost is it will raise your panic level assuming you keep your motors safe. You can also stay stationary to freeze time, letting your bar go down and being able to use the boost again. If you are doing any travel that would have you going to or past Greater Morrow, use the manifest ability to instantly travel to the collector. Even if you are trying to travel all the way across the map, the manifest ability will teleport you halfway at least. There is no reason to worry about speed when approaching dock points and dredge. These ports and docking points will not damage your hull, so feel free to ram into them. I have personally put all of my faith into those little tires on the side of the docks, and it has saved me a good handful of times. Before I give away the best bit of advice about getting some of the best books in the game, I need to tell you about my personal favorite tip of them all, wrecking your boat. Now, unless you are playing a hardcore permadeath, playthrough, wrecking your boat is not a big deal. You revert back to your last save and lose all the progress you have made. That's it. Yes, you may have to go back and refish areas or something like that, but the game auto saves often, so there's no huge loss of time. The game will also auto save every morning and every time you dock at a new port. That means you can race off to a new area, dock up somewhere, and then immediately set off to, to try out some fishing without too much risk. If you pair this tip with the last trick, you can fly across the map, set a save, and then try fishing all you can into the evening and, and possibly even at night before you can get bothered by any villagers or quests. Say for example, you were trying to take someone a specific fish and you realize you left it in your storage and you're not gonna be able to access that storage when you get to that location. You could accidentally wreck your boat and suddenly be teleported right back to where you were having not wasted any time, which can help save you in quests if they happen to be timed, just like our next tip. The hooded characters, or cultists, will give fetch quests when you speak with them. They will ask for three fish, one at a time. If you give them the fish, they will reward you with some of the best books in the game. There is a catch though, these are timed quests and require you to move decently quickly at fetching these fish, or they will starve and pass away. You don't get anything noting how long you have before they starve, and some of the fish they can ask for can only be gotten towards the end game. So I would recommend saving these four cultists till you are confident in your ability to catch all the fish you would need fairly quickly. If you do find one of these characters, you can feel free to use the trick from earlier and leave a crab pot in the area so you can find your way back later. At this point, you should have all the knowledge needed to be a successful dredger as the game progresses. Feel free to let me know down in the comments if I forgot anything. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more tips and tricks. Feel free to check me out over on Twitch if you want to watch me try and figure these strategies out. And if you would like to learn how to best spend your first 10 days, you can check out this video right here. I will see you guys next time.